Greetings everyone, my name is Jonathan Beatty. I teach here at Gateway High School and uh, I'm going to be do doing a presentation on self-determination theory. Um, I'm going to be using Prezi, I'm not sure if uh, some of you are familiar with that, but it's kind of like PowerPoint only with motion sickness. So um, it'll be kind of moving around a little bit. But um, so we're going to get started here in just a moment. Um, also the questions will sort of be posed throughout the presentation. Um, kind of at the top of each slide, I'll point out the, uh, the question that I'm trying to answer, and then uh, I'll kind of work through it a little bit there. So that'll be kind of like the format. And uh, so we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, a basic overview of self-determination theory. Self-determination theory for short is also known as SDT. All right, so let's begin. So what is self-determination theory? What is it? Um, well, a, kind of a, a very simple definition that I came up with here is SDT is a theory of motivation. It is primarily concerned with understanding what motivates people to act in positive ways. It also focuses on identifying and measuring the degree to which social and cultural factors play beneficial roles or function as motivational setbacks. So there's a couple of things here. Um, first off, SDT is a theory concerned with uh, how people are motivated, like what gets people going. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about motivating factors, and there are distinctions in those factors, but we'll get to that eventually. But, so really, it's concerned with understanding how people act. And, um, and specifically, it's concerned with positive action. How do, how do we get people, specifically our students, how do we get them uh, motivated in a positive manner? Okay, so that's kind of the first part of the definition here. The second part here is um, uh, SDT also focuses on identifying and measuring the degree to which social and cultural factors play beneficial roles, or they could be setbacks. So it's not just focusing on the individual, but the context in which the uh, individual exists. So, um, so those social and cultural factors, how do those kind of impinge upon the person um, who is um, uh, who is the person who's being motivated here? Uh, in our case, we're talking about our students. Okay, so that's kind of a, a working definition there. Okay, another question here: What kind of theory is SDT? Um, there's two ways of answering this question. SDT is a meta-theory. What's a meta-theory? Well, that means that it attempts to explain several aspects of human behavior in terms of a broad, overarching framework. What does that mean? It just means that this is a way of explaining lots of things. Okay? It's like a canopy theory uh, that explains lots of different aspects of human behavior. So uh, what kind of theory is SDT? It's a meta-theory. Um, also, uh, SDT is a dialectical theory. Okay. Uh, dialectical theory, well what does that mean? Human beings are in direct contact with conflicting or opposing forces resulting in varied behavioral outcomes. So uh, if you hold to some sort of a dialectical theory, you believe that the world is created in such a way that there's opposites, um, that there are these sort of forces that are kind of opposed to one another. Um, in particular with SDT uh, theory, we're talking about the individual and uh, their, their environment. Sometimes those things are in opposition to one another. And so that's, the, that's what dialectic means, uh, two things that are kind of opposed to one another. Dialectical theories assume that the world is in a constant state of flux due to the emergence of competing forces in constant tension until some sort of res resolution is found. So. Um, so a good example of this might be um, somebody wants to go to college. A young person wants to go to college. Okay, so that might be their, uh, uh, that's their desire. But there are things that are impeding them. One of the things that is impeding them is maybe their socioeconomic background. Okay, so that would be sort of a, an example of a dialectical understanding of reality where there's always these opposing forces and you have to overcome those opposing forces. Okay, so again, what kind of theory is SDT? It's a meta-theory, so it's, it's dealing with broad concepts here. It's also a dialectical theory in which 
Um, human beings are in sort of a constant tug of war with their environment, both uh, their natural environment and sort of their social and cultural environment. Okay. All right, what are the foundational principles underlying SDT? So what are some of those underlying ideas that kind of hold this theory together? Number one, pretty simple here, people have an innate desire to grow. They have a desire to flourish, to overcome challenging circumstances, and to let their experiences shape their identity. So people want to grow. Um, that's kind of one of the foundational principles of SDT. People um, come into the world ready to experience the world, ready to grow, um, and, uh, and, and really ready to face challenges as well. Okay? Uh, another foundational principle related to, to this first principle here is that these desires are not achieved automatically. So it just doesn't come naturally. We have to work hard at it. So one's social and cultural context can either support or hinder these tendencies, these innate desires that we have. So it's not enough for us to just have the desires. We also have to have sort of the, the, the cultural or the social framework in which to sort of actualize those desires. Okay? So those are the foundational principles. Um, what favorable conditions are required in order for motivation to flourish? So, um, according to SDT, one must have the sense that all three of the following psychological needs are being met. So, um, in order to be a motivated person, a positively motivated person, SDT posits a few different things. Um, there are these three factors that must be in play, um, and that must be positively reinforced um, in order for somebody to be motivated uh, in a positive light. So the first thing is autonomy, okay? Uh, the, the psychological need of autonomy. What does this mean? To be in control of your life, to be in control of your decisions, um, to, to basically, to have the freedom to be the person that you want to be. You have these sort of inborn ideas of who you are, um, and you also want to be able to express that in the world, okay? So you want to be in control of your life, basically. That's what autonomy is. Um, so that needs to be supported in order to be a motivated person. Um, competence is another of these conditions. What is competence? Well, we expect that, that of our students almost on a daily basis. We want them to acquire or master the skills necessary for success at a particular activity whatever that activity may be. So in order to experience this well-being that produces motivation, we need competence. Uh, we need to feel like we are mastering a skill set. We need to feel that, um, that we're doing well at an activity. Uh, I'm sure you guys are already thinking that this, you know, this bears heavily upon our students already. Um, so uh, also, the third point here, relatedness. Relatedness. This is just an idea for, of, of a sense of community. All of us desire a sense of community. Um, we want to interact with others in a positive way, and we want to build relationships with these people. Okay? So all of these three things, in order, in order to um, produce a positive motivation in, in people, um, we need to be able to, to sort of undergird all of these three principles, the principle of autonomy, competence, and relatedness. Um, but here's the question though, what happens if these needs go unmet? Well, um, obviously motivation is going to be stifled and, uh, and negative behaviors will begin to sort of manifest themselves. Um, some, I mean, and I'm sure you've seen some of these in your classroom possibly, but some of these uh, negative behaviors might be anger, aggression, depression, um, you name it. So, and, and that's, I think that's fairly obvious here. So, so these are the favorable conditions that, that, we want to, that we want to support. Autonomy, competence, and relatedness. Okay, uh, what is the distinction between extrinsic, extrinsic and intrinsic motivation? Um, in SDT theory, there's a distinction between these two kinds of motivation. You have extrinsic motivation, which, uh, which are basically forces that act on you from outside of yourself. Okay, these are things that you really have no personal control over, for the most part. Um, these are things that act upon you. 
Um, and, but they can be motivating factors, right? An extrinsic motivation, examples could be like rewards or the grades that we give our students, um, obtaining financial success, becoming famous even. All of these things are outside of the person, so they're called extrinsic motivations. Um, there's also another category. Uh, this is intrinsic motivation. Well, what is intrinsic motivation? Obviously, if extrinsic motivation is outside of ourselves. Intrinsic motivation comes from within. Okay? And uh, these are forces that motivate us from within ourselves. And, and, and the curious thing here is that they often have no tangible or measurable benefit right off the bat, meaning that there's no cash value to sort of intrinsic motivations, oftentimes. Um, they just motivate us simply because they motivate us. Um, examples could be you know, something like personal growth. We, wanna, we, we just want to grow. Um, it could be intellectual curiosity. We just like to learn stuff all the time. It could be um, the desire for close relationships, all kinds of things that you just can't put a price tag on. Okay. So which motivating factor do you think is more important? Well, this is kind of an interesting question to pose. I'm not saying I have the answer, but, but studies have shown, at least in the research that I did, studies have shown that intrinsic factors seem to motivate at a higher level than, uh, than extrinsic factors. So those things that are kind of welling up from within us, those motivations that well up from within us, seem to motivate us more than those things on the outside of us. And that kind of makes sense to me anyway. Well, why is this? Um, I'm just going to take a shot at it. In my view, it would seem that extrinsic factors only have a temporary value. So once you obtain financial success, you know, once you become a millionaire or whatever, where do you go from there? To me, it seems that extrinsic factors have temporary value in that sense. And um, whereas intrinsic factors have abiding significance because they are conceived from within us. Um, meaning that they're going to be with us always, for the most part. These are things that just drive us because they do. Sometimes we can't explain it. Perhaps we could, but sometimes we can't. So, um, so that's why I think studies might, um, those studies may have shown that intrinsic factors seem to motivate better. All right, well, um, how might SDT benefit educators and students. Um, this is just something I was thinking about. Uh, teachers can use their knowledge of SDT to address the psychological needs of their students, which will create an environment for optimal student, student motivation and achievement. So um, it's, it's fairly wordy there, but basically, once you know a little bit about SDT, once you know a little bit about what motivating factors are, um, are kind of at play in the classroom, I think we can really benefit our students here um, just with this knowledge and, and, and just on very practical levels and I'm sure some of you have already been thinking about this as, uh, as I've been pre presenting this. Um, so uh, let, me, let me give you some of my examples here. So what would this look like in the classroom? Well, um, let's take the first one, promoting autonomy in the classroom. We'll take those basic psychological needs. One of those is, is autonomy. So in order to promote autonomy in our classroom, why don't we provide students with a range of options on the format or the topic of a given assignment? So instead of just always sort of just giving them an assignment where um, we're, we're kind of laying out all the groundwork and there's really just no wiggle room, perhaps giving them more of a range of options on either the format in which they can present that assignment or perhaps the topic itself. Um, and I know that we probably all do this, but this encourages their autonomy, uh, their, their ability to kind of make choices on their own, right? Um, which, is, uh, which is probably incredibly beneficial to their motivation. Not probably, but we, we know that it is. Uh, also, if time allows, we should let the students choose a topic of study from time to time, right? Of course, we're going to place guidelines for them, of course. Um, but if we have the time and, and we have the ability and the wherewithal to do it, then we should let the students choose a topic every once in a while. Give them the freedom to do that. Give them that freedom of choice, um, which again will promote um, that autonomy. And again, you're going to get more out of your kids this way as well. right? They're going to be more mo motivated to do the assignment. Um, another thing we could do is to, is to promote um, 
Another one of these, these psychological needs is, is for promoting competence. We can provide clear, clear learning objectives that are posted in the classroom so that students know exactly what it is they have to master. Right? We all want to be competent at the things that we do, but sometimes we don't know exactly what it is we should be doing. I know that, um, that I've been guilty of this in the past where um, I don't, my learning objectives just aren't really that clear at times. Um, I think we could do better here. We need to provide clear learning objectives so that they know exactly what it is they need to master. Um, and this is a way of building confidence and competence in them. And once more, again, this is a motivating factor. This is really going to help. So once they've met that learning objective, we need to celebrate that success as well. I think many of us were good at, say, um, maybe putting the objective out there, right, being clear with that, but sometimes we fall short of actually just saying, hey, you did it, you did really well, and, uh, and I want to tell you that you did well, right? That means the world to some kids, you know, and that's going to boost their, their, um, their uh, sort of, their confidence that they actually are competent in what they're doing. Um, the last thing here is we can promote relatedness in our classroom. How can we do that? Well, I'm sure you guys do this on a regular basis, but just a couple of things that came to my mind. Number one, we can foster a sense of community and camaraderie in the classroom by establishing rules that promote social etiquette and courtesy. So um, fostering community and camaraderie, it, it does need boundaries. It needs rules um, that are helpful to build um, an etiquette in the classroom, so how we do things in the classroom. And also, rules, uh, rules are good because they can promote um, sort of an atmosphere of courtesy as well, right? And that, that, set, that, that really sets the stage for um, just having this wonderful sense of community where everybody's kind of on board, we know what we need to do, we know how we need to act with one another, okay? And again, this is going to promote a positive way to relate to one another, both from the teacher and the student perspective, but also um, from student to student. All right, and the last thing that I thought of was just take the time to get to know your students and treat them kindly and with dignity. And I know that many of us, and probably all of us, hopefully all of us, do this on a regular basis. But um, again, it's something that is just, it's simple, but seriously, um, it's going to help bolster their motivation to know that, um, that you know what, that, that you think highly of them, that you care about them, and that on a daily basis you're treating them with courtesy, dignity, and respect. Um, so that's been my presentation. Um, I hope it's been informative. And uh, I'm gonna, I'll be posting the questions as well later on tonight. So uh, thank you.